Lincoln. We, we are lighting the menorah. Uh, why do we do it over here? Why are we lighting the menorah? Why do we make a whole big to-do, a whole big tumult? Why can't we just do it in our home? We could be quiet. We could be good, quiet Jews. The neighbors don't bother the goyim. Don't bother anyone else. Why do we always come out over here and make a big thing? But that's really what Hanukkah is all about. Hanukkah is a time where we, we come out onto the streets. We make a lot of noise. It's a time that we tell people of the miracle of Hanukkah and the message behind it. We tell them about the light, and the power of light, the power of goodness can dispel darkness. That even though we may be few, we may be weak, we may be outnumbered, but nevertheless, when God is with us, we can overcome any and all challenges and any and all obstacles. And we hope that from here, from one of the highest points of the city, maybe next year we'll take a menorah, we'll go on top of the mountain. So we'll really be on top over there, we'll light the menorah. The, symbolically, we are spreading forth the light from here, from our community, in our little community in the world, are here in San Carlos, in, in East San Diego, to spread forth the light, to spread forth the goodness of what, uh, to, throughout the entire city, the entire county, and from there to the entire world. Now, the idea of lighting a menorah in public was started by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe said about we should go out and make lightings, and their lightings have taken place that have taken place all over the world in different in sports arenas, in malls, in city halls, in town halls, all cities throughout the country, and we're doing it here tonight as well. And in the year 1980, the Rebbe sent a letter to all those that are participating in public lightings, and I want to read you that letter, because that letter is ever so relevant, even so many years later, about 36 years later. So the Rebbe tells that Hanukkah is the festival of lights, we're recalling the victory more than 2,100 years ago. It's the victory of the military weak but, strong, but spiritually strong Jewish people over the mighty forces of a ruthless enemy that had overrun the Holy Land and threatened to engulf the land and its people in darkness. The miraculous victory culminating with the dedication of the sanctuary in Jerusalem and the rekindling of the menorah, which had been desecrated and extinguished by the enemy, has been celebrated annually ever since during these, ever since, during these eight days of Hanukkah, especially by lighting the Hanukkah menorah, also as a symbol and message of the triumph of freedom over oppression, of spirit over matter, of light over darkness. It is a timely and reassuring message for the forces of darkness are ever present. Moreover, the danger does not come exclusively from outside. It often looks close to home in the form of insidious and erosion of time-honored values and principles that are at the foundation of any decent human society. Needless to say, darkness is not chased away by brooms and sticks, but by illumination. Our sages said a little light expels a lot of darkness. The Hanukkah lights remind us in a most obvious way that illumination begins at home within oneself and one's family by increasing and intensifying the light of Torah and Mitzvot in the everyday experience, even as the Hanukkah lights are kindled in growing numbers from day to day. But though it begins at home, it does not stop there. Such is the nature of light, that when one kindles a light for one's own benefit, it will benefit also all who are in the vicinity. Indeed, the Hanukkah lights are expressly meant to illuminate from outside, symbolically alluding to the duty to bring light also to those who, for one reason or another, still walk in the darkness. What is true of the individual is true of a nation, especially this great United States, united under God and generously blessed by God with material as well as spiritual riches. It is surely the duty and privilege of this nation to promote all the forces of light, both at home and abroad and in steadily growing measure. Let us pray that the message of the Hanukkah lights will illuminate the everyday life of everyone personally and of the society at large for a brighter life in every respect, both materially and spiritually, with esteem and blessing in the spirit of Hanukkah. And let us say Amen. So we're going to light the menorah now, and we want you to think about as we light the menorah here tonight, as well as we're going home and lighting it as well, to have in mind for your home, for your family, for, for light, for illumination, for blessings, for happiness, as well as to our great country and for Israel, our homeland as well.
just to remember that it's still important to light the menorah at home. Hopefully everyone has their own menorah, their own candles. If you need, we also have some here as well, menorah and candles for you to take home. Before we get to all the, you've already got your delicious donuts and latkes, I'm going to ask everyone to come around over here. We're going to take a grand selfie. So everyone come over here behind, in front of the menorah. We're going to get a big selfie. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you want to get in? Yeah. Does it fit right on the 